Prevalent Things presents In Conversation With. I'm your host, David Batsoffen, and my guest today is the course coordinator of a course that I'm currently doing, and that is Tatum Pretorius. Tatum, good morning. Welcome to you. Morning, David. Thanks for having me. It's only a pleasure. Where do we find you this morning? Um, actually, in my office at Ulubani. Unfortunately, in the office, I'm not outside. Uh, the Wi-Fi isn't great outside, so I thought <laughs> I'd just be in the office this morning. <laughs> That's, but th thanks for taking time, because I know that you're incredibly busy. You've just come back from a really nice road trip, have you not? Yeah, my family and I went up to Mozambique and um, had a lovely time there. And now we're back in action with a new group here at campus as well. So we have the online course and then a group of trails and a field guide course also running here at Urban. And then, of course, you've got the Nature Enthusiast course, which is what I'm currently doing online with you guys. Yes, correct. And, and you see, I've, I've marked everything just to make sure you know I'm actually doing the work. <laughs> actually there, making notes and everything. <laughs> there, there are notes. Look, it's pages are awesome. full. Yeah, where are we going? There That's good to see. <laughs> pages are full. My handwriting is terrible. I've learned in these past 10 weeks, Tatum, and mm. I think you and I have had this conversation over um, WhatsApps and emails in the past 10 weeks, that I don't take notes properly. I really yeah. don't. And, and I have a terrible handwriting, so I'll scribble down stuff, and I think, yeah, I know exactly what this is. And then when yeah. it comes to the exam, when it comes to, to doing um, revision, I go, what? Is this word? No, what am I actually talking about? <laughs> what did I you know, I remember, and I suppose I'm outing myself in a way, in matric prelims back in 1970, <laughs> long before you, um, yeah. I cribbed my geography exam. My geography oh, yeah? was so bad, I only got 60%. <laughs> <laughs> you think if you're cribbing directly, my notebook was lying open on my desk. Yes, yes, <laughs> you still only got 60%. And I still only got 60%. <laughs> and, the, and the teacher... Well, luckily to be a writer, you can just type nowadays. You don't have to write. No, but you, you know what? There's nothing nicer than, than getting like a handwritten letter. Yeah, um, no, I agree. I and, agree. and yes, the, the typewriter does help or the keyboard does help because it corrects your mistakes, it changes your grammar, mm -hmm. it does all of those wonderful things. And then you go back to... The notes and go, what is that word? And I'm writing <laughs> in pencil. I'm not even writing. Oh, yeah, in pencil. just so you can rub everything out. Exactly. I don't even trust myself to write, to write <laughs> in pen. <laughs> Tatum, tell me what it's been like for you guys at Ulavani now with um, lockdown over the last year and, and moving. I know that you've you've opened courses, but you this is the fourth online course that you guys are hosting. So what has the change yeah. been like for you? Um, what was a big change for me? I was working up in Limpopo before lockdown and then I came back home thinking we we're just going to be like a three week stint or whatever. Then got longer and longer and then I kind of just integrated with Urbani. I was spending a lot of time here. We were doing a lot of brainstorming during um, lockdown to see um, what the best way is to move forward and we just decided online is going to be the way forward no matter if we wanted to be like that or not. Yeah. Um, so then we decided, okay, let's do this online course thing, but we're going to do it properly with a whole online platform and everything. And so then when it came to deciding who's going to put everything together, everyone pointed at me, of course. <laughs> because nobody else knows what's going on online and everything. I mean, half the team doesn't even use Facebook or Instagram or anything. So everyone just pointed at me. So I was like, oh, okay. Um, completely thrown in the deep end. Didn't know what I was going to get. Um, but we pushed through, it took three months to get everything ready for the first online course, setting up the course, getting all the lectures ready from the trainers, um, putting together online exams, workbooks, all those type of things. And then the first online course was a bit rocky because, you know, I wasn't even too sure how they would submit things or whatever. So, yeah, but it was, everyone is very understanding. We had a very nice group, our first group. Everyone was so chilled and laid back. And I don't think they really knew what to expect either. So <laughs> it's quite nice. Um, and then, yeah, every course now, we're just changing everything. Each course, we're adjusting our lectures. We're improving our exams. 
Um, we're trying our best to include more and more information like the tracking books, the um, bird information, the tree information, all of those type of things. Um, the more we realize what people actually want to learn online, so it's a bit difficult here, we in the bush. So yeah. for us, we want to know everything, but online, we're not too sure who wants to know what. So we kind of just adjust according to the group as well. Um, and yeah, we, we're going ahead. Our next course is, I think, in June, May or June. So yeah, so we're excited to see where it goes. Your, your first course, where were hmm. your participants from? Um, they were from all over, from the States. We had a lady from the States. We had a few South Africans as well that then came and did the on-site practical part, um, which we highly recommend because it's so different learning online and then actually coming and experiencing it. It's completely different and everything just comes together when you actually do the on-site training. Yeah. Um, With, without, yeah being, without being ageist, I have to say mm -hmm. that doing 10 weeks online is an easy sell to my wife. Because you know, <laughs> I say, look, I'm gonna go and sit in my office for a couple of hours. I'm gonna do some work, yeah. please don't interrupt me. And then I said, you know that at the end of this course, there's five weeks of practical. And there was deathly silence, which I took <laughs> to me. Five weeks is a um, long time. <laughs> it is a long time. And I've already <laughs> spoken to your dad, who is our what senior lecturer on the course. Yeah. And I said, I'm not so sure about the five weeks. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, maybe maybe in another lifetime, or if I can swing it, you know, my, we we'll see. There's always there's different ways. I'll come down for two days at a time. I'll take this to the end of the year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't have to do the whole five weeks at a time. You can yeah. come in weeks or days or whatever, <laughs> whatever suits your wife best. <laughs> <laughs> I know that <laughs> we've got a young lady from um, Netherlands on our course and a lady from Australia. So Australia, in, yeah. Yeah, in a way, this is really nice for you guys because it's bringing in people, international uh, participants that you might not have got before because they were unable yeah. to come out for like 15 weeks or 10 weeks um, and do the, both the practical and the theory at the same time. Yeah, it is very cool. And it's interesting you say that because at the moment we have about seven students at camp and they're all internationals. <laughs> we don't have any South Africans on course at the moment and they're here for a full seven week trails and then yeah. the others are doing the 10 week field guides and it's I don't know how that happened but we were very lucky and we got <laughs> um, quite a few internationals but yeah the the online is very cool for the internationals yeah. because then they can come and do the on-site whenever they have time so Natalie um, the lady from the Netherlands she's not doing on-site straight away she's doing it in a few months time when she has some time of work and time to travel and stuff, which yeah. I think is a really cool option for them. Yeah. Now, the, the the workbook that you guys have laid out, your dad has laid it out very nicely because he follows, you, you, we made it, we didn't quite realize it in the beginning, um, mm -hmm. how this thing was, the course was put together, but you work sort of literally from the ground up on your course. You yeah, it just makes more sense to work with the book instead of against the book, because otherwise <laughs> you're going to be hopping back and forth and then, oh, it's just a mess. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose we all waited with, not with bated breath, but with in eager anticipation, let's put it that way, for the mammals and the birds and the animal behavior, because rocks and plants and stuff, well, specifically rocks. I mean, a rock is a rock is a rock. Unless you're yeah, a but you can try to tell my dad that he'll tell you otherwise. He yeah, loves well, <laughs> th th this is the thing I was going to say. If, if you're a, ge a geologist or somebody who really enjoys rocks, a rock is not a rock. A rock is a story. Yeah, um, definitely. And, and that's what it's all about. And I think this is what you learn. I mean, even if people don't want to, to do the, the um, practical course, doing just this nature enthusiast course, Specifically yeah. for the South Africans, once you go into the bush, it it will make you see the bush differently, from the clouds oh, yeah, in the sky yeah. to the grasses on the side of the road to the rocks under your feet. You will see everything differently, and and you'll also know things about animals and birds that you perhaps didn't know, or didn't. Yeah. Or well, maybe you did know, and then your knowledge was just broadened on that subject. That's, yeah, that's cool. exactly it. This. Yeah. This for guys, of course, is, a, I think, one of the best all-round courses that they've produced. 
I really yeah, enjoyed it. Yeah, it's an awesome course. But now also, I have to say, and I don't know how the rest of your students find this, uh, but for myself, I've been trying to do a guiding course for 19 years. Um, I won't mention the company because the owner will be <laughs> upset with me. But it's an online course. It's a, it, it was, the theory is all online. And I've never finished it because there've been no deadlines. It's a case of you'll start, you'll start a module and you get around to, to finishing it or not. And then they mark it with an algorithm and then the algorithm just says you passed or failed. It's multiple choice. Yeah. So there's, there's no interaction with, like on, you, on this Ulovani course, the interaction is with you and with your dad and with Peter when he's available. Um, so there was, there was none of that for me. And I'm lazy when it comes to those sort of things. I like deadlines. Um, yeah. I, as a writer, I work very well to them. And so when I, I spoke to, to you guys and you said, we start on a Monday with a meeting. Workbooks have to be done by Thursday. There's a meeting on Friday. We write an exam on Sunday and then repeat. And I went- Good job. That is exactly why we, we wanted a structured 10 week course because yeah. We didn't want people to start and then everyone's just floating around doing their own thing and then they don't actually finish. So we thought it would be best to do a structured online course so that everybody finishes at the same time, everybody meets their deadlines and they actually get the qualification at the end of the day. So, right. yeah. now, now, I suppose, I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming and maybe I shouldn't assume um, that you have other work, that you're doing other things aside from this online because I know sometimes I submit my workbook early and then I wait and I wait and I wait and I go Tata mark my stuff I want to see what I've done <laughs> and then I have to realize uh, no the workbook is only due on Thursday and you will mark it on Thursday no doubt <laughs> not on Monday yes, I, do actually on have, I do actually have I do actually have a lot outside the online course <laughs> um, I help a lot with the social media so I get a lot of content here at camp and I uh, put together ideas my mom and I we work together on the social media stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So websites, marketing, all of those type of things, I help her with that. And then also just looking after the camp in general, the general hygiene, the housekeeping, um, just making sure everything at camp is civilized. Um, otherwise things might get out of control here <laughs> with my dad and Pete in charge. <laughs> I want to know how you many- You might just get lost in the bush and just <laughs> never come back. <laughs> I want to know how many liters of hand sanitizer you guys have ordered since you've opened up the oh, courses geez. again. <laughs> well, at the beginning, it was crazy. And now we've started asking people to bring their own because it's just, <laughs> just such an expense. Um, but yeah, it is, there, was, there was a lot of sanitizing, especially during lockdown before everyone came, cleaning yeah. the whole campus and getting everything ready. It was a story. It took about a week to get everything sanitized and cleaned and in the regulations. and. Yeah. Tatum, Tatum, take me back to Tatum at school. When you mm -hmm. did matric, what is it, grade 12 when you were at school? Yeah. Did you know what you wanted to do or did you think, look, I'm going to crack grade 12, I'll take a gap year and then I'll figure something out? Well, yeah, that's pretty much, I was from grade 10 stressed because I didn't know what I wanted to do and I felt like everybody else was like, oh, I'm going to university, I'm doing this and I... I'm not a university person. I don't see myself spending four years studying extra while I can study and work, what I've, which is what I've been doing yeah. um, online. But so after matric, I decided to take a gap year. I was working around Ulvani a bit, doing the social media and stuff. And then I ended up doing the actual field guide course myself in April 2018. And then after that, I did my type of placement in Kenya in the Masai Mara. I was You're there very lucky with, with, with doing <laughs> your placement up north. No, it was, uh, it was actually one of our old students who my dad trained when we started Bush Academy, which was before Ulovani, so more than 15 years ago. He is the general manager at the camp today. And somehow my mom got in touch with them and they were like, oh, yeah, I take this time um work for us or just do a like internship kind of thing and I was like okay cool and then when it got to the day I was like oh no what am I doing this is so stressful I never left the country let alone by myself and I went off and yeah it was a amazing four months I worked very hard but it was very special and yeah I just want to go back I 
Yes, I just want to go back to the Mara. <laughs> and then so when I came back, I still didn't really have a plan. So I was kind of floating around again <laughs> for a few months. And then I got a job up in Limpopo in Panabora at a hotel and I was doing front of house for a few months and then they created a social media marketing position for me um, and so I was finally doing what I wanted to do like the marketing I was doing photos for the hotel all of those type of things and then lockdown happened um, after <laughs> me just being there for over a year finally finding my feet and everything and then yeah lockdown happened and then I started my journey with Ulavani again. <laughs> How did you get from Limpopo back to Ulavani um, in those early lockdown days, or did you make it just before they went? That's it. No I, so it. the day they said there's lockdown, I think there was like two or three days until the actual lockdown. I jumped in my bucky and I drove all the way down by myself. <laughs> um, it took me about two and a half days to drive down from Palabora because I was so like stressed most of the yeah. time. Um, I'd also never done like a proper road trip type thing by myself and it was very far I think it was like 1,400 k's or yeah. something crazy so I did it in about three days um and then finally got home collapsed for about a week and then <laughs> and then yeah that was it but the, for people who don't know um firstly let me just go back let me find that um share screen and not switch off the recording um I wanted that um, tell me about a little bit about Ulavani. What does the word mean and where are you guys based? So Ulavani actually means chameleon. As you can see, our logo is a chameleon. Um, my parents have always loved the chameleon and how it adapts to its surroundings, which we really pride ourselves in, especially in times like lockdown, where it was very stressful and we just had to adapt with the times. Um, we're based in the Eastern Cape between um, Grangstown and Port Elizabeth just next to Amakala Game Reserve, which is where we do our game drives and our walks and um, sleep outs and things like that. So it's a big five reserve. Um, we've been here now for 15 years. Uh, well, almost 16, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, we were first based on Amakala Game Reserve at a lodge. So we were first based at a, like a camp, like a tented camp um, for a few years. And then we built Ulavani on the Ulavani um, property which is just next to Amakala. Now we've I, been on this campus for about 10 years now. Okay I think people don't realize that the Eastern Cape is actually a wildlife destination. You know everybody goes to the low felt. Um, they, they don't they don't tend to to go down east or west for that matter. Ah, Tatum seems to have got herself stuck so I will keep talking until she she returns. Uh, Tatum, if you can hear me, I, I'm looking at your face and your lips aren't moving, which means that you've probably frozen. Um, for those of you who are interested in, in doing the course, uh, you can look them up. It's Ulavani. Um, Gay, well, Ulavani is the company doing the course. We've now lost Tatum altogether. I'm hoping that she will return momentarily. Um, and as I said, this is all done through Fagaza. It's Fagaza. He says, waving it around at his camera, which he can't find. David, um, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Tatum. You're back with me. Um, I don't have you. There you go. You see, this is there the, we go. I've got you the, back. <laughs> in your radio. I can I can talk for hours with nobody there. I was just saying, <laughs> sorry. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> it's quite a right. This is a Fagaza accredited course, which is very good. I was actually saying. Um, that people don't realize that the Eastern Cape is a wildlife destination and a big five destination at yeah. that. I think in to be fair or unfair, the only province that isn't a destination is the Western Cape. They don't really have big five. Yeah, for um, wildlife, it probably isn't the best to go to the Western Cape. But I mean, the Eastern Cape, like you say, people don't realize how beautiful and diverse and there's actually so many private game reserves just like in the... 20 kilometer radius. It's yeah. us, it's Tamari, it's Karifa, Sibuya, all those type of places. And Addo, of course. Can't forget yeah. Addo. Which is where I grew up. Now I don't know whether you can see this. This yeah. is a little hair that was made for me by a friend. And this is called Quand hair because it was okay. the first time I ever saw a scrub hair, which was at mm. Quandwe, which is just outside of Gramstow. Okay. So cool. so that that hair. Is has traveled all over the world with me. Sure, that's cool. 
Yeah. But I almost forgot about Conway as well. Yeah. It's a very nice place. Yeah. It, and and they've they've got great wildlife there. Nice cheetahs as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I haven't. I've never been there, but I've seen that they have a lot of leopard and cheetah, buffalo, yeah. things like that. So, and also very different terrain there. It's yes. Quite, it's not deserty, but just quite dry and arid compared and, to and, down here, where it's more yeah. thicket area. Yeah. Yeah. Big open area. I mean, the first visit I went there, I found bat-eared fox and aardvark. Oh, oh, in the, oh, nice. On the, I've got them in the same image. It's a rubbish picture because oh. I didn't have a good year <laughs> at the time. But but I've looked it up, so they're on. They're, they're off my bucket list because I've got it. I've got them. Awesome. Um, take, That's very special. Them in if people who watch this are interested in doing um, the course, either the theory course online or one of your practical courses, how do they make contact with you guys? Um, so they can email us directly at inquiries at olivani.co.za or candice at olivani.co.za. It both goes to my mom. Okay. <laughs> so she deals with all the bookings and all the course information and prices and all of that. Okay. So they can contact her directly for any extra information or prices, dates, things like that that they would like to know. And it's Candice, C-A-N-D-I-C-E. Yeah. Great. Yeah, because the only reason I ask that is I met somebody last week um, mm. who spells Candace C-A-N-D-A-C-E. I'd never seen it before. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I've actually seen that spelling before, but it's D-I-C. Yeah. Great stuff. Tatum, thank you so much for joining me here on In Conversation With. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. And um, thank you for the last nine weeks of, of putting <laughs> up with me and my nonsense. Um, I know your, your dad and I had an interaction last night over two tracks. Um, yeah. I figured them out eventually. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Your dad had a good laugh at my stupidity last night. Because <laughs> I'd sent him an answer and I'd sent it back to front and I thought that a tortoise track was a... He, I think, thought that I said the tortoise track was the honey badger and of course it's not. Oh, okay. And I'd put yeah. them in the wrong order. <laughs> so he, had a, he had a good laugh at me, but uh, all is good. Thank you so much. I'll let you get back to the variety of work that you do and... Uh, all the very best for, for the next course um, and for courses going forward. Thanks so much, David. And thank you for having me on your little chat. It was very nice to finally see your face and meet you. Um, but yeah, good luck for the last few weeks and for your final exam. I'm sure you'll do very well. <laughs>